Internet censorship. Does it protect our country or impinge on our civil liberties? Google recently released its transparency report for the last six months of 2012, which revealed a spike in government requests for content removal. From July to December 2012, Google received 2,285 government requests to remove over 24,000 pieces of content. That figure is up from the previous six months, where Google only received 1,811 requests to remove just over 18,000 pieces of content. Google's legal director, Susan Infantano, released an online statement about global government's increased attempts to censor online content. She said, as we've gathered and released more data over time, it has become increasingly clear that the scope of government attempts to censor content on Google services has grown. In more places than ever, we've been asked by governments to remove political content that people post on our services. Dr Peter Chen, a political science and media lecturer at the University of Sydney, has studied censorship for the last 15 years. He said that governments generally censor information for moral, political, cultural, religious or security reasons and that by large such content does need to be censored from the wider public. I guess personally uh, there are times when clearly there's material that is uh, distributed online which is um, reprehensible and uh, Uh, Attempts should be made to prevent its production in the first instance and distribution in the second instance. Um, There's heaps of material about um, our security arrangements, that's uh, our relationship with, say, the United States with regards to the war war on terror, Uh, access to information about refugees and asylum seekers has been censored, Um, restricting access to detention centres, preventing journalists from filming or reporting on individual uh, detainees. There are good examples of censorship. Um, and uh, the, the question is, I guess, as a political community, is to what extent that any country tolerates the range and extent of censorship that is um, active within that nation. John Lawrence is the Executive Officer at the Electronic Frontier Australia, a not-for-profit independent association fighting for digital freedom and access in Australia. He said that Australia's current levels of censorship and data aggregation, particularly in regards to users' personal information, are some of the highest across the globe. That's that's a pretty big concern, and and if you look at sort of the increase uh, over over two or three-year period, it's been quite dramatic in Australia, and I think um, something like 300% increase in in requests for user account information over over three years. Uh, And that makes us... That puts the numbers for Australia... um, Sort of out, out in front of the rest of the world in uh, in absolute terms, and, and if you look at things in per capita terms, obviously we're probably uh, seeing the most requests on a per capita basis around the world. So there's clearly, uh, you know, clearly Australian law enforcement is uh, is seeing this information as, as, as pretty important to what they're doing and and going after it as hard as they can. Now, whether they're um, you know, whether that's appropriate and legitimate is, is another question. Some members of the public have expressed fears that the Australian government may use censorship powers to oppress their civil freedoms. Dr Chen said this is highly unlikely in Australia. There have been no proposals to censor political content and I think the, the notion that in Australia we are likely to see very partisan use of filtering technology Um, is extremely unlikely and highly paranoid. While Mr Lawrence agrees that the Australian government is a long way off becoming oppressive, he said that reports such as these remind us to be vigilant. Um, You know, there are reasons to be concerned and so forth. You know, the idea that we would be sort of heading down the Chinese road is, is... You know, that's a long way off, um, but we do need to, of course, remain vigilant. Instead, Dr Chen said the increase in requests to censor Google content is simply a response to our growing use of online services. I don't see any particular worrying trend in the fact that some of those request numbers have gone up. I think that just reflects that the net is becoming a much more mainstream medium and laws that used to be applied uh, domestically are now being extended to that medium. But Dr Chen said the debate on censorship will be ongoing as no one culture can define what is and isn't appropriate content. You know, if you can't even determine what you consider the boundaries of what is the, the subject you're talking about, it is very difficult to have um, a, uh, to reach a, a national or even a local consensus about what is and is not appropriate material for discussion.